بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ وسرات وسلام علی خاتم الانبیاء آنریبل چینسلر رسپیکٹڈ چیف گیسٹ ڈاکٹر سمر مبارک من ڈسٹنگوشڈ اوورسیز گیسٹ فرام موریشس افغانستان مسٹر پرو چینسلر ایکسیلنسیز ممبرس آف بورڈ آف ٹرسٹیز اینڈ بورڈ آف گورنرز ڈینز ڈائریکٹرز پیرنٹس اینڈ دیر اسٹوڈنٹس السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ I welcome all of you and would like to share with you very briefly in what you have just now heard from one of our students, the Lava Quran Kareem. When you are graduating, entering practical life, you need some kind of guidance. Nothing can be more valuable guidance than what the Quran provides us. The ayat were a nasiha, an advice of Sayyidina Luqman to his son. But we are all children of those ambiya who were sent to humankind. And at this moment particularly, those advices are extremely pertinent. You just heard, it begins by telling us that first thing is to observe your duty. Salah is a duty, an obligation. And therefore, prayer makes a person extremely conscious, aware of not only responsibility, but also accountability. When you enter practical life, you must remember, you have to observe your duty, as we observe duty to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by praying five times a day. Similarly, it tells us that you have to be a soldier, a fighter for truth, for good, for virtue, for what is recognized as just. Therefore, it says, Amar bil maruf. Then it says, you have to also fight all kind of injustice, inequality, discrimination, all those idols which people have made to worship. Therefore, munkar must be stopped. Then it tells us, as a graduate, you might feel, now I know something. Now I have done my MPhil, my PhD, my masters, my bachelors, and now I am something. Therefore, it tells us, do not feel proud. The worst arrogance is that of knowledge. And therefore, the Quranic ayah tells you that you have to be humble, you have to be polite, you have to bow down, not to feel that you are carrying ultimate truth with you. It further tells us how you should deal with people. By a frowning face, by raising your voice, or by submitting, having a low tone of your talk politeness, humbleness again. Knowledge brings humbleness. Although people think when they have information, they have power. Therefore, the few ayat you heard provide us enormous guidance for those particularly who are going to enter practical life from this day onwards. Before I proceed further, let me share with you, this is our first 10 years of existence of university. We were given charter in 2002 by the federal government of Pakistan. Alhamdulillah, we have committed one decade today. And that requires again, attitude of thankfulness and not pride. We have tried our level best to have quality education, but that must not lead us to think that we are something. Inshallah, I hope, with the leadership we have, with faculty we have, the students we have, we will be, inshallah, leaders in Muslim Ummah. Yet, we have to do a lot. My friends, education has always been linked with development. And development has been defined usually in terms of economic development. Therefore, you find people 
looking in developed nations for HDI's Human Development Index, coming up with analysis of their gross national produce, per capita income, level of education, alleviation of poverty. All these are very good. But countries which have practically eliminated ignorance and fully literate, countries which have high gross net produce, countries which have people who are living luxurious life and where you have only two classes, the highest classes and lowest classes. Is that the criteria for success? Does that make them good human beings? Does it allow them to treat others with same respect as they expect for themselves? Therefore, those who are graduating should remember it's not a matter of just economic development, but we must have a holistic development, a development where your ethical, moral values determine what kind of steps you take in economic life, in political life, in social life, and elsewhere. Unless we strengthen our moral fiber, we cannot succeed anywhere. Our success lies in strengthening our morality and ethics, and only then we'll be able to lead nations of the world. With these few observations, let me share with you very briefly about the university. Alhamdulillah, in past few years, we have been able to persuade our students and faculty members to develop a culture of research. Although numbers may not be high, but we are moving in that direction. And this year, Alhamdulillah, our faculty members have published a good number of such papers in impact factor journals, as well as they have participated in a large number of conferences at international and national levels. In order to strengthen the moral fiber and to make them better teachers, we introduced for our own teachers a diploma, which we call PG Diploma in Ethics and Teaching Methodology. And that is spread over two semesters, during which they have been able to look into teaching methodologies as well as understand what kind of ethical behavior, what kind of guidance they should provide to our students in coming generations. We have also been able, alhamdulillah, to have two mega events in the year, particularly our ICME, the Medical Education Conference, held in Abu Dhabi, where we had 183 presentations and 405 participants with three no, Nobel persons who were able to get Nobel Prize in medical science. We had another event, which was our Islamic Business Conference, and there again we had five IDB awardees who were resource persons for the conference, along with we had uh, eight working sessions, 560 registration registered there, and 26 papers were made by these dignitaries. The RIFA has also come up with link with industry, and for that we established RIFA Advisory Council for Excellence to develop uh, our link with industry. We have also established quality insurance cell, cell where quality enhancement is our concern, and inshallah we are going to have our ISO 9000 certification very soon. Last thing I must mention is, which is not the last but uh, something to be mentioned anyhow, and that is involvement of our students in our society upliftment. When we had floods in the country, then our students particularly and faculty members all joined together, and with their help, alhamdulillah, we have been able to build 42 houses in Char Sada and deliver those to people who were affected by that. This was with the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and awareness of our students and faculty members as well as the administration of the university. We have also been able to establish 
disaster management cell in the university, and that's working uh, efficiently for all calamities that have been the country. I would also like at this moment to recognize the services of those departments and some individuals who have been able to uh, help us in achieving our mission. Among those, disaster management cell and particularly our IT services department and campus management system both deserve appreciation. For the disaster management cell, I would like to recognize personally the efforts and work of Dr. Omar Awab, Professor Dr. Azhar Sheikh, Dr. Mr. Muhammad Nasir. And for those who have been working on our VLE, Virtual Learning Environment, Management Science in, 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 in uh, IT management, uh, I would like to recognize particularly uh, Mr. Muhammad Umar Farooq, our registrar, Dr. Fawzia Batool, Mr. Amir Manzoor Wai, Mr. Suhail Mahmood, Mr. Shahid Mehbu, Mr. Asif Nasir, Mr. Aurangzeb Ahmed. And lastly, I would like to share with you that one of our faculty members, Dr. Khadija, has been awarded Research Productive Award for 2010-2011 by Pakistan Council for Science and Technology in Science Affairs. We share these feelings with you, and I hope, inshallah, this convocation, like others, will bring to you not only happiness, but sense of responsibility, which you have to do uh, while you are joining your practical life. Thank you again. May Allah bless you all.